In this session, we'll look at how to create a cut and fill earthwork exhibit for a proposed site plan. As you can see, I've got a drawing open on screen. This site plan represents a proposed fast food restaurant. Now I've got a couple surfaces here. I've got one surface. If I select this, we can see it. This is called survey. That represents the existing conditions. Let me select this other surface. If I hover over this, we can see this is called P lot. This represents the proposed grading. In fact, if I come up and choose object viewer, we can orbit this and you can see what that surface looks like. Let's close the object viewer. I'll press escape to deselect the surface. I would like to create an earthwork exhibit for this site. Let's start by calculating the earthwork. I'll do that by going to the Analyze tab, and then I'll choose the Volumes dashboard. From here, I will create a new tin volume surface. A tin volume surface is a surface whose elevations are based on the difference between two other surfaces. For a name, we'll call this Earthwork Calcs. And then for the style, for right now, I'm going to choose Triangles only. I'll click OK. For the base surface, I'll select the survey or the existing ground. And then the comparison surface, I will choose the proposed lot. I'll click OK. I'm not going to make adjustments to the cut and fill factors. We could adjust these if we were going to compensate for expansion or compaction of material. I'm going to leave those at 1 for right now. Let me click OK. There we go. My earthwork calculations are finished. If I drag this down to the right, we can see that I have a net of approximately 2,500 cubic yards of cut. So my site is long. We can also see that here in the graph. Let me click the check to close the panorama. So we've done our calculations, and now you can see this triangulated surface here that represents the volume. Normally we don't display a surface like this. One thing I can do is use this surface to colorize the areas of cut and fill. Let's do that. I'm going to start by creating a new surface style. I'll do that by going to the Settings tab. I'll open the Surface category, and then I'll right-click on Surface Styles, and I'll choose New. We'll go to the Information tab, and then for the name, I'm just going to use initials here, we'll call this JB Earthwork Display. Then I'll come down to the Display tab, and I'll say whenever I use this surface style, the only component that I want to see are the elevations. So I'll turn that one on, and I'll click OK. I will then assign that surface style to my tin volume surface. We'll do that by selecting it. I'll go to the Properties palette, and then I will select the style here from the list. I'll press Escape when finished. As you can see, the surface elevations are now colorized, although this colorization doesn't have much meaning. Let's change that. I'll do that by selecting the surface, and then I'll come up and choose Surface Properties. And here on the Analysis tab, I'd like to do an elevational analysis. Number of ranges, we'll set this to 2. And then I'll click the arrow to push that down to the Details area. Using these two colors, I can highlight the areas of cut and fill. We'll take care of cut first. We can see the deepest cut is 5.59 feet. We'll take this up to a negative 0.5 feet. I will then click in the color field, and we'll choose a nice red color. Next, we'll take care of the areas of fill. For my minimum elevation, we'll set this to 0.5. We'll go all the way up to the maximum fill of 2.47 feet. We'll click in the color field, and I will set this to green, and I'll click OK. Basically, what I'm saying here is if the existing surface elevation fluctuates up or down by 6 inches, it's essentially no change. Therefore, we are only colorizing cut greater than 6 inches or fill greater than 6 inches. Let me click OK. We can see that colorization. Now, the surface is still selected. Let me right-click, and I'll push this to the back. I'll choose Display Order, and I'll choose Send to Back. Now, in addition to knowing my earthwork calculations, I can actually see where the cut and fill areas are located. Let's go one step further. I'd like to have an idea of how much cut and fill is going on in these shaded areas. We can do that by creating some labels. Once again, we'll come over to the Settings tab, and then I'll open up Label Styles here under the Surface category. We'll create a new Spot Elevation Label Style. I'll right-click on that group, and I'll choose New. For the name, once again, we'll go with initials. I'll just say JB Grid Ticks. We'll go to the General tab quickly. Let me click in the preview here, and I'll zoom in. We can see an example of the label there. Let's go to the Layout tab. Currently, we just have the one component, Surface Elevation. I'd like to set the anchor point to the middle center of the location being sampled. And then for the attachment, I'll choose the middle center of the text. This centers the text on the sample location. Next, we'll go to the Contents field, and I'll click the Ellipsis button. We'll make a modification to the label itself. I'll do that by selecting this program code over here, and then we'll change the precision to the even foot. I will also change the sign. We'll open this up, and I'll say Drop the Sign. 
I don't need to see the negatives because I'll know it's a negative if it's in the red area because it's cut. Now that I've made those changes, I'll click the arrow to create the new code. I will then click OK and OK. Now that I've created that style, let's back up a little bit and we'll assign it to the surface. We'll do that by choosing the Annotate tab. I'll click Add Labels. I would like to label a surface. I'm going to label Spot Elevations on Grid. I'll use my new Grid Ticks style. I'm not going to use a marker in this case. The label will be the marker. Let's click Add. I will then select the surface I'd like to label. And then I'll click in the lower left corner here. My grid rotation is going to be zero, so it's going to run horizontal. My grid spacing, let's put a label every six feet in the X direction and Y direction. You can see the grid on screen there. All I have to do is pick the upper right corner, and I don't have to be real specific with this. It's not going to create labels in an area where the surface doesn't exist. So I'll click right up here, and then I'll press Enter. I can then zoom in, and we can see the nice grid labels there. Now that I have these labels, I can see the deepest area of cut is going on right here. And then with respect to the fill, the area of most fill is right along the curb and gutter here. Now, as you look at these labels, you may be thinking, you know what, in the area of no change, I have a lot of zeros here. Is there a way I can eliminate those? Yes, we can. We can do that through an expression. Let's do that. I'm going to close the Add Labels dialog box. And then in the Spot Elevation group, let me expand that. In here, there's an Expressions option. I'm going to right-click and create a new expression. For name, I'll call this no zeros. Generally speaking, what I'm going to do here is say, if the label falls within my zero range, I'm going to give it a zero text type. Therefore, it won't display. So the expression that we'll use, let me click in the expressions area. I'll open functions here and I'll say if, then we'll open properties. If the surface elevation is greater than 0.5 or the surface elevation is less than negative 0.5, I will then put in a comma. So if it falls in that range, I'm going to enter the text height I'd like to use, 0 0.008. I will then add another comma, and then I'll use zero. This represents the text height if it doesn't fall within this range. Let's wrap this up by adding a closed parenthesis, and I'll click OK. Now that I've created my expression, let's add this to my grid tick style. I can do that by right-clicking. I'll choose Edit, and then for text height, let me click in this field. I'll click the drop down and I'll choose my no zeros expression. And I'll click OK. There we go, the zeros have disappeared. Let me back up and I'll center this on screen. At this point, I've done my earthwork calculations for this site. I've also identified where the cut and fill is going to occur. And I've got a nice schematic that identifies the amounts of cut and fill. The best part is that all of this information maintains a dynamic relationship to the existing and proposed surfaces. This means that my earthwork exhibit is essentially maintenance free. If I were to make changes to the existing or proposed surfaces, this exhibit will update automatically. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.